Sometimes in life you are given the opportunity to go to such thrift stores that supposedly uh, focus on fabric and patterns and thingies. And today's that day, so I'm going to take you along with me. We're going to go into the Scrap Exchange here in Raleigh. No, Durham, North Carolina. And I won't be doing this alone. I am going to be going along with Danielle. You can follow her on Instagram here if you so choose. And she also just happens to be the author of The Secret History of Home Economics, which is a fantastic read and is currently in pre-sale for their paperback edition. So come along with us and let's go a thrifting. Now we only had one hour till the store closed and there was way too much to see. So we just went into the exchange. Overwhelming doesn't even fully convey what I was feeling. One side was more general repurpose from old books to old show choir posters and to things that made my soul die. They even had some book art and some... I, j I just can't. Rest in peace, Simplicity 6838. What was so interesting is that this place truly had a gigantic range of items available. Some of the most useful, like this red toolbox, to a graveyard of trophies and plaques. Madison Curran, if you're watching this, let us know how life's going. And then it was time to go to the other side, the reason we were here. The lace, the beads, the vintage sewing machines, and everything in between. This side was truly heaven for me. A whole stash of zippers from straight out of other things to dead stock in the package. And here I am. Can I say I walked out with none of them? No, 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 I could not resist and I walked away with far too many metal zippers. Am I sorry about it? No, no, I am not. I'm not even sorry. As far as fabric goes, they had everything from rolls of fabric to bolts of old fabric. If I could have fit most of that into my luggage on the way home, I absolutely would have, but I did have to restrain myself just a little. Beyond the wall of buttons was, that's right, more fabric. Which beyond the bolts seemed to be mostly scraps and or damaged pieces. And we aren't going to discuss how confronted I was by the UFO section in this store. Yeah. And if you thought there weren't going to be vintage patterns here, you would be massively incorrect. Uh, this three-drawer set was the primary spot for the, quote, vintage <clears throat> walk-away dress. But there actually were real vintage patterns in there. And I did dig through and find a few. But the patterns weren't just in this little tub. There was also an entirely full three-drawer set. An end cap of questionable macrame things. and another entire display on the far side of patterns ranging from released last year to the 19... Uh, you could solidly say about the 1980s. There weren't many more that were older than that. <laughs> Bye. Ooh, the lighting is baller. Ooh, nice. Look at that, pretty, pretty. So that was super cool. So if you are in North Carolina, and I'm sorry for the background noise, I'm not putting on my microphone. If you're in North Carolina, specifically Durham area, you definitely want to come to Z Scrap Exchange. We had fun. I will show you things when I get back to the hotel and it's not, you know, outside. The next day. Here I was thinking I was all ready to go and I left the receipt over there. So I, I'll be right back. A few moments later. Ah, okay. Let's look at all of the lovely things that I got at the Scrap Exchange here in Raleigh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with all the stuff I found. Sorry, that probably sounded awful against the microphone. And then I will get into what I spent on all of it. Uh, what do we wanna start with? Patterns, fabric? Let's start with fabric because I haven't gotten to unroll any of this except for one piece. So we'll start with the one that's already undone. Froggies! I am so sorry if I just deafened you. So this adorable little print is going to be frogs my best guess is uh, probably 80s, early 90s. There are no little dots on the side to really tell you like the color fastness or the maker. So uh, your best guess is as good as mine, but I'm thinking 80s, 90s for this dude. But either way, there was three and a half yards of it and I did pay $2 a yard for this guy. 
There is unfortunately some pretty decent staining. So this one is probably gonna have to go home and take a quick soak so I can get that staining out before I either use it for my daughter if she claims it as soon as I get home or I find a new home for it. Now this cutie, I've been wanting to unroll this. <laughs> this, they pre-measure some of their fabric pieces and then label them right there. So this one is two yards at 45 inches wide. It is a shag bark style, which means as soon as I get the rubber band undone. Okay, great. You can see those little ribbies right there, those little puckers, that is not damage to the fabric. That is how this is woven. The selvage looks pretty clean along the edge there. But unfortunately, stuff like this is harder to date. Not impossible, but harder. I'm gonna probably guess 80s for this dude, but I could be wrong. But either way, it's super cute, and I, I'm pretty sure somebody will want it. It's an adorable fabric. And for this one, I paid $6. Now, you know you are at a good store when you immediately walk in and you see some type of novelty or border print. Do I know which one this is? No, because I did not bother to unwrap it while I was in the store. So let's do that now, shall we? Because I want to know. I did sort of peek to make sure it wasn't anything problematic, but I don't think it is. So let's look at it. <gasps> the woman was too stunned to speak. Oh my freaking God. Are you kidding me? Okay, um, that's better than I thought it was going to be. They said this one was three yards at 45 inches wide. My dudes, that is not 45 inches wide. This is 36 inch wide fabric. Nose to the end of your arm is about a yard. Oh my God, what is this though? So it's a cream color backing. I'll put in a better photo here so you guys can see. Looks like some type of waterway. Oh. <laughs> I've never been happier for someone to be wrong. Never, never in my life have I been happier for someone to be wrong about a width of a fabric. And I found this thrifting. You guys, I haven't found border print thrifting. I think ever. I found it at estate sales. And I buy some like cheaply on eBay when people just label it like vintage fabric. Oh, I'm so glad I unwrapped this while I was with you guys because holy crap, this is so cool. <laughs> I've never been happier for someone to have been wrong on a label. And I paid $9 for this and I'm so happy. Well, that just made my entire friggin' day, y'all! Man, I wish I would have stopped with that. I was gonna save the patterns for last because the patterns are friggin' hilarious, but that thing is friggin' awesome! Okay, well, we're gonna go to zippers now. <laughs> oh my God, so good. All right, zippers, I got a bunch of them. And they're all dead stack. It's great. I did a short on it there, maybe. Yeah, probably there. Uh, these all range pretty much from the early, the earliest one is going to be this talon right here. Boop. So this one's like late 30s, early 40s range. Uh, this is before they started printing dates on the back, which I was exactly today years old when I realized that talon zippers, sometime in the early mid 40s, they started actually putting the dates on their zipper packages. So if you find the package itself, either on the inside here on the back, or just straight up on the back. It will tell you the copyright date for that year. So like this one right here is from 1954. Uh, but yeah, so I found a whole bunch of metal zippers and I did leave some for other people, but like the older ones, like this crown, like how cool is this one? Look at that, focus, there it is. Like, look at that, that's like early 40s with like the slightly rounded tab pull. Oh, it's so cool. And I got, how many did we figure? 17, 17 zippers for 75 cents each. Now, remember friends, if you find belting in the wild, buy it because it's a pain in the butt to find anytime else. Here we have, I don't know when this is from. This is a Traum. 
probably saying that wrong. This is just the belting. So this is 40 inches of just belting. My best guess by all the line work and the drawings here is probably 40s, 50s, 60s, somewhere in there. No, I cannot nudge it down farther. There is no copyright. Oh wait, I'm a dirty liar. There's a zip code. So this is after 63, there you go. When in doubt, look for the zip code. At least gives you an idea. But either way, happy to find some more belting to have. Pro I'm probably gonna keep this so that I can actually make the belt that Jen sent me forever ago. Cause I definitely haven't done that yet. Ooh. However, this bad boy, wham, 1984 Dritz belting here. This is just going to be for the cover tab itself, not actually the belting. But the nice thing about Dritz is they actually labeled it on the back for the copyright, so I know this is from the 80s. And in things that I have never shared, but it was in the total, so I figured I'd show you. Uh, washi tape, moustaches and bow ties. I've never actually purchased washi tape before, but it was cute. It was a dollar, so I'm... I don't know, probably paid too much. Don't really care. It has mustaches and bow ties. I'll probably use it to seal like my thank you notes for my opera singers here. So cute little addition. And now what I am known for, the patterns. And I feel like the best place to start this is with a video that's been the most recent on my channel as far as reactions. <laughs> Remember that terrible, terrifying Christmas tree and snowman pattern from the calls that I mentioned in my Christmas reaction video? Look at what I found! <laughs> I couldn't not get it, you guys. I couldn't not get it, y'all. I just couldn't. It's terrifying. But it needed to go in my shop. I'm like, I'll check it at some point, but come on! Like, scary. Scary, scary. But I feel like some of you said you wanted to make it, so it's a size six to eight, so it's a kid's size, but hey, go. If you too would like to traumatize your child, do I have the pattern for you? Emotional damage. And speaking of childhood trauma, this one's going to be added to a video this year because yikes. <coughs> a Halloween cover up and treat bag. The Stuff of Nightmares. Now I get it, it's a time saver quickie, but can... Mm, the hood situation there? No? No, no. Oh mercy, this is a size 2 to 4, so you're terrorizing a real small child with this one. Woof. That is all the terrifying ones. Now on to the much nicer and friendlier ones. Now there weren't a whole bunch of patterns that were adult size that were like the froofy, floofy frilly things. That's, that's English, I promise. You know, like, sort of like this. There weren't a whole lot of those, but I did find some kid ones, so I figured I'd grab those. First up is McCall's 3501. This is going to be a child girl dress with like a little pinafore style, princess lines, and a ruffle. This one is a size five, and it's just super cute. Like, I think it actually matches one of the ones that I have at home that I said I was going to make for myself, but my daughter is not a size five anymore, so... I, I'm gonna have to use the other version of this that I found, which is McCall's 4326. And you can see here just another really cute child's dress. There are fewer panels on this one to create the princess lines, but they're still there. And they can actually do a little Juliet sleeve, which I think is really super cute. And this one I actually found two of, so I found a four and an eight, which I always like to find multiple sizes when I can. So I just grabbed them both. I have no idea if they're complete, we shall find out. If I were to make one for my daughter though, it's probably gonna be the size eight because that's closer to her because she's already in like a size seven, eight in real life. So like this is probably pretty close for her in vintage size. Also, by the way, I am currently in Raleigh and it snowed into my hotel room. So this is what I chose to do with my day. Not like there wasn't paperwork that I should be doing, but we're just going to ignore that. I'll do it later, I promise. All right, next up we have McCall's 7198 which is a cute little actual, wait a minute. Is that button on? Oh, oh, the little bib front to the dress is button on. Isn't that adorable? Me learning things in time. So there's like a regular tent dress, a skirt, pants, and then that actual whole ruffle front pinafore is all button on at the waist. Ain't that adorable? This one's a size four. I can't decide which one I want to end with, so I'll end with the one that I think looks the neatest. So we'll go up next with McCall's 3925, which is a Laura Ashley drop waist pleated front dress with a very large collar. 
This one, I believe, unfortunately, is a size eight. So it is basically the smallest size. Yeah, so it's a bus 31 and a half. But again, I just typically, if it's a Laura Ashley or if it's Gunny Sacks, I'll pretty much grab it anyway, just so that it can go into my store because y'all seem to like Laura Ashley. So I want to find the things that you would like. Again, this one is cut, so I don't know. I don't know if she complete. I'm going to check it though to make sure. Okay, so the last thing to share with you is my final pattern, which I personally think is the best. It is Simplicity 7806. And look at that back. I love the cutout back on this situation. I also kind of like how like the big main pieces is just one big piece, but it's really super cute. I love the slightly gathered bust and thankfully it's not the smallest size, which is always fantastic. And whoever had it last, like really cared about it because it's in, I want to say it's like a, an actual comic book bag, which is good job if it's one of the acid free ones, which most of them are. And so this one is going to be a bust 36. And now you may be wondering, Stephanie, what did you spend? My grand total for this endeavor was, drum roll please, 46.62. It was really the zippers that got me. 75 cents per zipper, while they are fantastic, is actually on the high end of what I pay for zippers. I didn't realize it until I got done. I was like, and by the time I was done, I was like, meh, it's fine. But also because most of those I will either use or Will I list them on my website? I don't know. I keep saying I'm going to and never do. Do you want zippers on my website? Let me know. Tell me down below if you want them. And then I will actually make a section and do photos and put them up there. But all in all, I have to say, this thing took the cake. This border print right here. That was by far my favorite thing. I think now that I thrifted and $46 for all that, not a problem. Happily will pay that. Thank you, because that is cute. And I think the best part about this is that any of you can go there. It is the Scrap Exchange. I will put the address right here for you. And it is in Durham, North Carolina. It is fantastic. I actually only managed to go into one half of it while I was there. There's a whole other store that is proper thrift store that I didn't even get in because we ran out of time. But I hope you did enjoy this video today. If you did, make sure you're clicking that like button before you leave because it does help me in the algorithm spreading the word of vintage goodness. Leave me a comment with what your favorite find was that I found today. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss further endeavors from me. I hope y'all are staying safe out there and have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Did I push the button? I did push the button. Don't fall down the stairs. Don't fall down the stairs. I have too much to do. <laughs> Perpetually. We don't flash the camera. We don't flash the camera. Don't flash the camera, we don't flash the camera. Anyway, I should probably do the thing. Things I do not need, but like that is super cute. Oh, my light is going away. Darn you, rainstorm. And be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss few. And subscribing for further. <laughs>